reminds me of and underlines for me my Ulster heritage. Today, I am on my way to Swatra in County Derry, where my father and mother were born, and my people have lived for a very long time. You went back, there was, I had an old wicked mare here, and we're, we're going to cut hay with her. You were the farmer here? Yes, that's correct. That's right, I was here at the time. And you went to hook on the chain, and she kicked back, and she hit you on the side of the leg. And uh, she raised you up onto the air, the height of that roof, and you fell, I thought you were killed. Mm. And uh, you would have been in trouble if I wasn't. <laughs> 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 if she had had you, you'd you'd go go back you back As a child, I used to spend my holidays here, and the majority of my relatives still live here. Derry is, of course, one of the six counties of Northern Ireland which are separated, not alone from the remaining 26 counties of Ireland, but even from the other three counties of the ancient province of Ulster, of which they are part. The most recent death in 1902. Nancy. So you'll be around for quite a while, yes? Our people are indomitable, but this lovely old city of Derry has suffered greatly in modern times. The setting up of the Six County Administration artificially separated Derry from her natural hinterland and as a result her trade, commerce and tourism declined. The present violence has grievously scarred what once was an attractive and gracious city centre lying pleasantly along the banks of Loch Foyle. These walls of Derry on which I am now standing are very symbolic indeed. For one tradition, they symbolize victory in battle long ago, conquest, domination. From these walls, one tradition, the Unionist tradition, could look down there on the disinherited and the dispossessed. For many centuries, the people of the other tradition, the nationalist tradition, yearned passionately to be part of an independent Irish nation in which their hopes and dreams and aspirations would find fulfilment? Is it beyond the capacity of modern statesmanship to bring these two traditions together in a fruitful and harmonious partnership? The people who stood on these walls looking down and those who lived beneath them. St. Cullum Kill named the city which he founded Derry or Dura, which means the little grove of oak trees. The term Londonderry, in my view, means nothing at all. The fact that my roots are here makes this whole border thing seem preposterous to me. I enjoy coming back to renew childhood associations and to be among my cousins, but I shouldn't have to cross a political frontier to do so. I'm standing here within yards of the border that divides six Irish counties from the rest of the country. A large majority of the Irish people would remove this border by peaceful means if they could. It's guarded by units of the British Army, and I can never come up to this border without experiencing deep feelings of anger and resentment. This border is only there for 60 years. It's an artificial line that runs across and divides in two, a country which has always been regarded as one, and which has always regarded itself as one. This border is economic, social, and geographic nonsense. It runs through the main streets of towns and villages and divides farmyards even. It separates neighbor from neighbor. The town of Clonus down the road there has suffered appallingly. For 60 years, it has been cut off from its hinterland and from its natural outlets and it has never had a chance to develop as it should have. Britain and Ireland are two countries which have very close links, personal, cultural, commercial. We should have, as two countries between us, a sound, harmonious, 
fruitful relationship. But as long as this border exists, regretfully, that can never be. I became a politician because I wanted to change things, and I have managed to improve them in some areas. My vision is of an Ireland emerging from our history of conquest and conflict, cherishing manifold cultures and traditions, and looking with poise and confidence to a future of peace, freedom, material prosperity, and individual happiness. We were one of the first peoples of Europe to have a concept of nationality. We struggled for it for centuries, and yet we were one of the last to achieve nationhood. And for reasons largely outside our own control, we still haven't finished making our nation. Other countries have become modern nation states before us and are free to evolve from there. We have not as yet, and while I hope that we soon will, that task still confronts us. Which means that when I talk about my Ireland, I am talking about something which is not yet a complete reality. It is a dream that has not yet been fulfilled.